Shabbat Shalom, my beautiful people, and welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel, Real Real Serious Productions, Biblical Truth Unveiled. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I go by the name of Miss EYG. And welcome to the Biblical Truth Unveiled series. And as you see below, this is part two of the um, Son of the Most High deception. And um, right now, I want to encourage you guys, if you have not watched part one, stop the video right now and go watch part one. But in part one, we spoke about... Um, the deception of um, of what a Messiah actually is and what contrary to what the Most High and the Bible speaks of the Messiah being right versus what we were taught that the Messiah is which is one specific person but if you read through the entire scriptures and you actually know the definition of the word Messiah in the Hebrew language and in the Hebrew text, it means one anointed with oil. So again, if you guys have not watched part one, be sure to go watch part one right now. And in this part two, we will be discussing um, what the New Testament says about, um, sorry, what the New Testament says about um, being anointed, okay, and versus kind of like a, okay, you know, what the New Testament says, um, con contrary to what the Old Testament said, which is everything that I um, read and dis we discussed in part one. So this is kind of like compare and contrast to part one. Okay, so again, if you guys have not watched it, make sure to stop the video right now and go watch part one so you can continue into understanding this part two. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, um, let's get your Bibles out and let's dive right into this knowledge. And before we do that, I'm going to actually show you guys the Bibles that I'm using. As always, I like to show you guys my Bibles that I use um, so I'm using the regular King James Version, okay, along with the complete Apocrypha, right? And then this is the scriptures, right? So that's the scriptures. And this book is actually, um, it's a little bit more, slightly different than the King James Version. Um, it's giving the Hebrew text, the Hebrew names, and kind of give you that understanding that the King James Version is kind of like taken away from you in a sense. So without further ado, let's hop right into this knowledge. Okay, so we are going to ask, the first question we're going to ask ourselves, was the supposed son that the Most High sent, was he actually anointed? Okay. And like I said, if you looked at or um, if you watched part one, we went through what the Messiah, what a Messiah is, is someone who is anointed with oil, right? The Most High anoints this person to be a priest onto his people, to teach the children of Israel, right? Of the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments. Someone that is anointed with oil. That's what the definition of a Messiah is. So we're going to ask ourselves, the first question you should ask yourself is, is the supposed son that the Most High supposedly sent to supposedly die for our sins, was he actually, in fact, anointed with that oil? Okay, just like all the other Messiahs were, David and a few others, um, the Levites and Aaron, they were actually anointed to be priests unto the Most High. So if they were anointed to be priests to the Most High, was his supposedly son anointed as well? So we're going to look into that, but we're going to first go to Acts chapter 10 verses, we're going to jump down verses 36 to 38. And it reads, And the word which was Yahuwah sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by... JC, okay, or the supposed son. I'm not going to speak his name. I'm not going to say the name because there are a few people who choose to 
to call him whatever name you're going to call him, okay? Whether you call him JC or whether you call him another name with another, you know, blackface, whatever. Um, so whatever you guys call him, but I'm going to say the supposed son of the most high. Okay. Verse 37, the word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Yuda or Jehuda began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached. So this is supposed to happen after the baptism of John preached, right? Verse 38, how Yahuwah anointed JC, the supposed son of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Remember we spoke about in part one, Holy Ghost. Ghost is something that's dead. So the Most High is anointing the supposed son with a dead ghost. But okay. With power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for Yahuwah was with him. So let's stop right there. First of all, it says that the Most High anointed Nazar Na anointed the supposed son with a holy ghost, which is a dead spirit. If you were, that's like I brought it out in part one, the Most High doesn't anoint you with a specific spirit, a Holy Ghost, or a dead spirit, or a familiar spirit. The Most High anoints you with oil, right? He anoints you with oil, not a spirit. He has you to be anointed and set apart as a Messiah with oil, right? And it, it is a specific spirit that comes upon you, but we're going to get to that a little bit later. But I'm speaking in just right now because I don't I don't want to lose anyone. If you go back and watch part one, we spoke about and we read the actual scriptures of where it said that the Most High had his priests to be anointed with oils, set apart. Just like he anointed the Sabbath and he set it apart, same thing with his priests. And to those who would preach the word and preach his statutes and commandments to the children of Israel, they were to be anointed with oil, a specific oil, not any kind of oil, but a specific oil and set apart. Okay? Well, we're going to get much deeper than that. But let's go now to John. Let's go to John chapter 1. Um, we're going to start at verse 1, okay? And it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahuwah, and the Word was Yahuwah. Okay, so pay attention to this. I'm not going to get into specifics right now, but um, I'm going to get into it a little bit later on, probably in another video, if I can fit it in this video. But if not, definitely going to say it in another part of the video. Pay attention to how they said, okay, the, the beginning was the word. And then they said the um, the word was with Yahuwah, right? Look at the next sentence, part uh, verse 2. The same was in the beginning with Yahuwah. Okay, so it's saying there was the word. Then the word was with Yah. And now the word is Yah. Okay, so like I said. Keep a lookout for that. Verse 3. All things that were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4. In him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 6. There was a man sent from Yahuwah whose name was John. Okay? So this is showing, this is John's entrance. Um, why are they mentioning the most high, you know, being the beginning and being the word? And then they just skip right into basically saying the beginning of the word and beginning of the most high and things like that. And then they're going, they're diving right into, okay, well, John, what about everyone else that became before John? Just saying, but that's first red flag. Um, but this is the first entrance of John. So now we're going to skip down to verse 
Let's look at verse 32. Okay. And it reads, and John bore record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode above him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water and said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending, remain on him the same which is baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay, a few things here. First of all, what spirit is John seeing? Okay, what spirit is he seeing? My regulation, we can't see spirits. That's number one. Number two, he said the spirit that he's seeing um, is him that's baptized with the Holy Ghost. Remember I said, if you look up with what the Holy Ghost actually means, ghost is a, is a, is a dead spirit or a demon or like, why would anyone want to be, you know, there's a Holy Spirit and then there's a Holy Ghost. You got to look out for that because they they try to tell you one instant, okay, the Holy Spirit, but then over here it's a Holy Ghost. Ghost is something that's dead. Why would you have to be, why would the Most High have someone be baptized with something that's dead? The Most High is the Father of the living. The Most High is the Father and the Creator of the living. He is not the Father of anything that's dead. So to comp comprehend or connect him with anything that needs to be baptized and say, okay, the Most High baptize you with the Holy Ghost. A ghost is something that's dead, that has no life. The Most High is life. His word is the ways to life. He is life. He gives life. He also takes it away. But you guys get what I'm saying. The most high is life. So why would he have to baptize you with anything other than life? Right? And number two, you guys have to pay attention to. If the most high sent, he specifically sent down this individual came right from him or he is him. He is him in the flesh. Think about it. If this is the most high in the flesh, why does this flesh that came from the most high himself, if the most high is dwelling in him, the most high said, this is me in the flesh and the most high is perfect. The most high is the only one that is perfect. The most high is the only one that is great. That is good without sin. Why would this supposedly son have to be baptized? Think about that. He hasn't did, committed any sin. He came right from the most high, right? He's the most high in the flesh, right? So why does he have to be baptized? The most high is perfect. He's good. You saw in the beginning. Go back to the beginning. The most high said, let there be light. Let there be this. And it, when he spoke these things, it was so. And it was good. Meaning the Most High doesn't speak anything bad. There's nothing bad or wicked in the Most High. Open your brains, open your minds and really understand what, and ask yourself these questions. Ask yourselves something that is perfect, that comes from the Most High. All he has to do is say so. He is wonderful. He is glorious. Far more worthy than to be praised. If anything comes from him, in the flesh, why does it have to be baptized? And some people might argue, well, we were sent from the Most High. Well, we were we were from the Most High sent us here on earth. Yeah, from our mother's womb, right? Someone else that's in the flesh, that has many sins within their flesh, right? Especially if they don't know the Most High. That's a different conversation for a different time. But something that had no flesh interaction something that supposedly we're going to get to that too that that a spirit created it to be born and the mother was a virgin so there's no corruptness in her her flesh but here you are 
I was specifically sent here through the spirit of the most high, but I'm still needing to be baptized. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because the most high, is, he's not going to make anything corrupt. He's not going to make anything corrupt if he's, he's sending it personally. So I want you guys to think about that. Well, we're going to get much more deeper. As, as it goes on, we're going to get much more deeper and things are going to make a lot more sense. Just please hang in there with me. Okay. So let's go now to uh, Jeremiah 23. And for a minute, we're going to skip down to verse 21. And it reads, I have not sent these prophets. Oh, sorry. Let's let I want to uh let's go to 20. Sorry, Jeremiah 30 23 verse 20. Okay. Actually 19. Okay, and it reads Behold, a whirlwind of Yahuwah is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Okay. That's why so much wickedness is going on. 20. The anger of the Almighty Yahuwah shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the later days, you shall concern it perfectly. 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. So this is a hint to the Most High saying that he has not sent these people. He didn't send us a son. He did not send us his supposed son to die for our sins. He didn't send him. Okay? We're going to get into it. We're going to get much, much deeper. I know we're, I'm just scratching the surface right now. But it's time, my people, that we come from this delusion. The rabbit hole is very deep. The deception is real and is bigger than we can realize. We are in a great heap of trouble. It's why this is the very reason why the Most High said to put no one before him. But yet here we are, even in this truth, where people are putting someone that they think that the Most High sent as a son they're putting him before the Most High. When the Most High said no one's supposed to be before him, he's jealous. Why would he tell you that? To not put anyone before him and say, here, here's a son. You can't get through to me until you get through him. Does that make sense to you guys? I know I'm just scratching the surface. That's because we have to go piece by piece. And why we have to break the why I have to break this down. But it's time, my people, that we come from this delusion. When the Most High said he was going to put a delusion on our people, he put a delusion on our people. All praises to the Most High, Yah. He put a strong delusion on our people. Just when we think we're getting what to what we think, the rabbit hole is deep, my people. And if you don't believe me, seek the Most answer. Uh, sorry, seek the Most High for his answer. Seek his truth. Okay? But we're going to, we're actually going to still be in 23 Jeremiah. We're going to start at verse um, 11. I should have started there first, my apologies, to show you who 21 is talking about. Verse 11. For both prophet and prophets are profane. Yeah, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Almighty Yahuwah. Therefore, their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith the Almighty Yahuwah. That's why so much wicked and evilness is going on. Verse 13, and I have seen fully in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesy in Baal which was the devil or the demons, okay? And caused my people, Israel, to error 
This is even happening in the truth. Our people are being caused to error, thinking that the Most High has a son that he sent for us. And it's not the case. Okay, verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery. They walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. And none doeth return from his wickedness. This is part of the wickedness that we have to turn away from. Having false, believing in false gods. Which is his false son that he supposedly sent that he never sent. This is something else that we're supposed to turn away from. Not just the JC character. Some people, yeah, you might put a black face on him and change his name. But that's still idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. That's not his son. Okay. They all are of them unto me as Sodom and as inhabitants thereof of Gomorrah. Okay, it's the same wickedness that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Same thing. Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Almighty Yahuwah of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of Gale. For, and for from the prophets of Jerusalem in profaneness, gone forth into the land. Okay. Verse 16. Thus saith the Almighty Yahuwah of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Almighty Yahuwah. So the Most High has said before, this is what a Messiah is. They're anointed. These are the people that I'm going to anoint to you. I'm going to set them apart. I'm anointing them with my oil. I'm pouring out my wisdom. We're going to get to that as well. I'm pouring out my wisdom unto them, to them to tell you, to teach you. This is what the Most High said in the Old Testament. If you watch part one, remember we talked about what the Most High in the, in the Old Testament said that a Messiah is. But here we are having a New Testament speaking something very contrary. Okay? And they have a lot of our people thinking that they go one and the same, that they go together. But once you really study it and once you really research it, the New Testament is teaching against the laws that are taught in the, New, in the Old Testament. If you really, really look at it, yes, they plagiarize and they take certain things from the Old Testament and put it in the New Testament. But that is to brainwash you to think that, OK, this is the same thing that the Old Testament said. When the narrative that is being drawn out here is idolatry, we're believing in someone that is a man. Then the Old Testament say, believe not in man, but only in the Most High. We're believing in a son that he sent. Supposedly. Isn't that believing and putting our faith in the man? Someone in the flesh form? Someone that's not the most high? We have to think about that. Okay? Verse 17. They steal unto them that despise me. The Almighty Yahuwah said, Ye shall have peace, and they shall say unto everyone that walketh after in the imagination of their own heart, No evil shall come upon you. So if you walk in the imagination or, or you know, walk in the ways of your own heart and what you feel you believe instead of opening your eyes to what the Most High says and what the Most High tells you to believe, then you're walking a vain walk, ladies and gentlemen. You're walking the walk to destruction. That's why we have to come from idolatry, all forms of it, the most high and the most high only. OK, verse 18, for who have stood in the council of the almighty Yahuwah and hath perceived and heard his word, who have marked his word and heard it. OK, who have marked the most high's word and heard it. Our forefathers, right? Our forefathers. So, I mean, the, the, we're, we're just scratching the surface, ladies and gentlemen, but the most high and the most high only is going to save us. No sun. Okay? And I apologize. I don't want to get anyone upset or I'm not trying to take away what you believe. Hey, what you believe is what you believe. Okay? But I'm merely trying to help us all 
you know, because it's, it's a lot. What we feel we can understand, the most high even said it, that a wise man, you know, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't forbid wisdom because no matter how much you know, you can always learn more. It's time to come away from these delusions. It's time to seek the most high, seek his peace and seek his answers. Okay. But we're going to look more at his supposed birth. Okay. So let's go to um, Matthew verse, sorry, chapter one. I'm going to skip down to verse 18 to 20. Okay. And it reads, now the birth of J.C., or the supposed son of man, whoever, however you want to call him, was on this wise. When as his mother, Mary, was exposed to jo Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So before before Joseph, Joseph um, and Mary came together to be, you know, the, make the completion of husband and wife or sex, if you will, she was already pregnant by the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit here. It says the Holy Ghost, okay? And like I said, you can look up right now the definition of what a ghost is. Um, even in Hebrew, it means demon, it means devil, it means dead spirit, okay? So Mary was impregnated by this demon, by this wicked spirit, by this dead spirit. It doesn't say Holy Spirit she was impregnated with. It It says the Holy Ghost. And if you look at the word ghost, we all know what a ghost is, right? So you don't have to believe me. Just look it up right now. Do your own research. I'm just putting it out there for you to look into it. Go by the most highest understanding, not even by your understanding, not even by mine, okay? If you disagree with anything, do your own research. It would do you good to do your own digging and your own research, okay? Okay, um, verse 19. Then Yosef, her husband, being a just man, meaning he was righteous, and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately or privately. Okay, so he was a just man. That means he knew the laws of the Most High. And we're going to get to that in a second or why um, it says that. Okay, because he actually, he knew the laws. He knew the laws that if a woman is, you know, playing the harlot or she's pregnant you are to make her an example because that's that's not in the Most High's law. So this is why it said, um, we're going to get to actually where that law is specifically, but it is in the laws that if a woman is being a whore or she's being, you know, promiscuous or even if she's gotten pregnant um, and she's played the harlot, you're to put her away and to make her a public example, meaning, you know, you're to, you're to let it be known that this isn't okay. Remember, and if you think the story of Tamar, if you guys know who Tamar is, when she got pregnant, right, and Judah was going to put her away before and, and make an example out of her before um, she let it be known. No, don't put me away. Look, um, I didn't play the harlot. You are basically my baby daddy. You are the father of my child. I didn't play the harlot. Um, here's your, your, uh, I forgot exactly what she took from him. I think it was his watch or something like that. Um, so when she showed him then those things, he let him go. It was like, you know what? You didn't play the harlot. Those are my things. So I, I, I'm the, I'm the father of your, of your child. So this is, you know, I kind of put that in to tie it with this. So Joseph knew the laws. He knew that the most high did not play around with harlots. Okay. So he was like, um, should I put her away? Because she's pregnant and I ain't even touched her yet. You know what I mean? So um, that's how he was saying it. Verse 20. But while he thought on the, those things, behold, an angel of the Almighty who appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Yosef, the son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost. Again, Holy Ghost, not Holy Spirit, but the Ghost. So. Knowing the laws that are the old laws, 
Here you have the New Testament where a supposed angel of the Most High is saying, I know you know those laws, but no, you can, it's okay. You can go into her because she's, she's pregnant by the Holy, Holy Ghost. Basically saying disregard the old, the, the, uh, the old laws, the laws of the old, the Old Testament, right? Which is where those laws were. And Joseph knew those laws, which is why he was like, uh, I don't think I should be doing this. That's why he was very timid to touch her because he knew those laws, right? But he's a supposed angel of the, uh, and saying, no, she, she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So you're saying, and we all should know by now, when the Most High sets laws, he sets laws. He does not change. So once he makes a law to do something, that law is to be done forever. But here you are right here in the New Testament, right here in the first chapter of the New Testament saying, no, you know those laws? Oh, it's okay. Go into her. Don't make her an example. You could, you could still wife her. But knowing that we, what we know, the most high, when he sets laws, he sets those laws and they are to be kept forever. So think about that. Those laws are to be kept forever. He does not change. He doesn't mean, okay, follow these laws today, but I'm going to send somebody else to tell you this, to dismiss those same laws later. The Most High is not a contradiction. And the Most High is definitely not the author of confusion. So we need to all take that into perspective when we're reading. Really think through what we're actually reading. So this is just one incident that the Old Testament, the New Testament is going against a law of the Old Testament. Right here, first chapter. There are many more. We're going to get to them, okay? But this is the first. This is just the tip of the iceberg of one of the laws that are in the Old Testament. And here you are in the New Testament is saying, nope, forget that law. Right here. We just read it. So... We're, we're going to get more into it, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, when you look up um, the word ghost in Hebrew, it means uh, demon, it means devil, it means dead spirit, right? Um, so again, um, basically it is saying that um, this supposed son of the Most High was either born of an evil spirit Okay, um, but it could not mean, you know, prosperity or wisdom or anything like that. But we're going to get to that later on. So, again, as I was saying earlier, how do you baptize um, an evil spirit or how do you baptize someone with a dead spirit? Right. How do you do that? Right. Like. This is basically what scripture is saying. If you open your eyes and open your minds and really dig deep into what you're reading, we have to look at everything. We have to analyze. Now is the time that we have to strip away completely of what we feel that we know, right? Or what someone else has taught us. We have to strip those things away. We have to completely strip those things away. And renew our mind and renew our thinking and actually dig and do this type of research for ourselves, right? And I know, and I, I know that the next thing that I'm going to say is going to offend certain people and I don't mean it to be. I'm saying this with all honesty and all love that if you guys are following these camps, these camps are going to lead you to astray. I'm not saying all of them, but majority and most of them, if they're teaching you to believe in the sun, if they're teaching you that this is, you know, you have to believe on the sun and call on the sun in order to call on the most high. The most high never needed a middleman. He just needed to use someone to move through. But if you're going to call on him, even David knew. That's just like saying... David or Moses or anyone that the Most High used in the Old Testament to teach the children of Israel 
anyone that they, you know, he used, that's like saying the Most High told the children of Israel to pray not to the Most High, but to them. That's like the Most High telling Moses, tell the children of Israel to pray unto you. The only way they can get to me is through you because I talk face to face to you. You guys understand that? That's like him saying to David, tell the children of Israel, since you're the king, let them pray to you because you're the king and you who are chosen and who I anointed to be king. So let them play to pray to you because that's the only way they're going to get to me. We have to really think about what we're reading here. Why would the most high say he's going to send a son for us to pray to him? Because he is the only way we're going to get to the most high. When the most high and the most high only, even the days of Noah, the days of Moses. No, I'm sorry, not Noah. The days of Moses. He told the children of Israel to pray to him. And they understood that. To pray to the most high, not to David. Even though the most high was using David. I mean, not David. I'm sorry, Moses. But David too. But he, even though the most high was using Moses. To do these signs and wonders. He was using Moses. But all glory and praises belong to the, the Most High. They knew to pray to the Most High. It's the Most High that brought them out of Egypt. Not Moses. He used Moses to part the sea. But that was ultimately the Most High's great work. It's the same thing now. The Most High is going to come redeem us. The Most High is going to save us. Not no son. He never needed a, a, a middleman for us to pray to. It's him and only him. So we have to really understand what we're dealing with. It is time that we come from this delusion. It is time that we move ourselves from being deceived. It is time that the most high, that we allow the most high to do what he has already promised to us. And our part of what we have to do is letting go idolatry. This is idolatry. Whether he has a, a Hebrew name, whether he is white, black, it's idolatry. We have to come from idolatry. This is how he, Satan is deceiving the world. Idolatry is the number one commandment that the Most High said not to disobey. It's idolatry. Knowing that he is he who he is and he is always going to be that. Just how it was then. We knew to pray specifically to the Most High. We didn't pray to his son then, a son. We didn't pray to David then. We didn't pray to Moses. We prayed to the Most High then. Same thing then, same thing we have to do now. The same way he brought them out of Egypt then is the same way he's going to bring us out of our captivity now. Praying to him and to him only. Giving him and him only the glory and praise. So we have to understand the most high is jealous. The most high is jealous. Why would he say he's jealous and he wants no one put before him, but then send you a son so that you can believe in him? Does that make sense? We have to come out of this delusion, people. We have to. Now is the time. Now is the time. We got to. We got to come out of this delusion. But let's get, I'm sorry, I, I kind of rambled. Um, I get a little bit beside myself when I'm speaking the truth because we have to come out of this delusion. We have to get back into seeking the most high and the most high only to save us. No one else. So we're uh, going to go now to Acts. We're going to go to chapter 7, and then we're going to jump down to verse 51 to 53, okay? And this is more precept of the ghost, right? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your forefathers did. So do you. Um, what ghost or spirit did our forefathers have? They had the most high and wisdom and instruction and the commandments, not a ghost. Okay. Verse 52. 
which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them which shone before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers so here they're trying to build up the narrative to get you to believe in the son right this is the narrative that they paint so you can believe in this character the all the new testament is is creating content around a character to getting you to believe okay verse 53 who have received the law by disposition of angels and have not kept it. So, like I said, this verse was to pull you in and to get you to, to believe in, you know, this character. Whoever the writers are for the New Testament is blatantly brainwashing you to believe on this character. Yes, they might nick and pick and pull and bring out certain things from the new test from the old testament so that your brain can automatically go like okay you know what i saw that in the new test i mean i saw that in the old testament so that must mean it's true okay i saw that in the old testament but really if you take apart and actually know where they pick cherry pick these um plagiarized sentences and phrases from once you cherry pick it apart and see exactly where they 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 took these took these sentences from and they took it took the the words from and you put them back and then you go back to read it and be like oh that wasn't talking about that initially that was talking about this we're going to get into it more and more but that's something else that we have to do we have to really open our minds and really see that you know yeah you might think that the new testament and the old testament go together but they they bump heads. They bump heads a lot. Okay. On the surface, yes, it might look like they go together, but you really dig deep. They are bumping heads. One is going against the other and the other against the other. Like we're going to, we're going to get more into it. This is the last scripture um, that I'm going to get to for this topic. Okay. So we're going to go to now John chapter 20. Now we're going to ju jump down to verse 21 and 22, okay? And it reads. Then said JC, or the supposed son, to them again, peace be unto you, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. So he's taking credit here for the most high, right? He said, peace be unto you as my father has sent me. Even so I send you. So he's taking credit and saying the most high, even as the most high, he didn't say even as the most high sent me, he's sending you. No, he's taking credit for the most high. He's saying, no, even as the most high sent me, I send you. Red flag there. Okay. Verse 22. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Okay. So he's saying here, he breathed the Holy Ghost. He breathed Holy Ghost is a goat, a holy, well, not holy, a ghost, dead spirit. So he breathed the dead spirit onto them. He breathed the spirit onto them. First, before John said, he saw this spirit descending. But now this is saying he's breathing the spirit onto them. Okay. And that doesn't sound right. I'm just saying. You don't breathe the spirit. That's not how the most high works. We're going to get into that in part three on what actually the holy set apart spirit is okay but he's saying he breathed the spirit onto them he breathed the holy spirit what spirit are you breathing onto someone we're gonna get into why that really doesn't fit but that is it ladies and gentlemen 
for part two. I hope I didn't lose you. I really hope I encouraged you guys to at least stay tuned for the for the more parts that I because each part I'm gonna break it down more and more so it can make sense to you. So don't give up just yet, okay? Please allow the Most High to to open your eyes to seeing that we are being greatly deceived, okay? We are being greatly deceived and we are still committing adultery, okay? Please allow the Most High to do his work within you. And if you need confirmation, if this is true, if you need, please seek the Most High, okay? You're not rejecting me. You're going to reject the Most High and I really don't want you to do that, okay? Please seek the Most High for his confirmation. Whoever's watching, if you're having iffy feelings, because I felt the same way, because I thought I knew what I knew. I was calling on a certain someone, you know what I mean? Until I came to this understanding, all praises to the Most High Yah. If you are watching this and if you feel a little bit leery in your spirit, please, please seek the Most High and wait for his answer. Seek him on what he feels. Praise to Yahuwah. What am I supposed to do? And allow him to guide you where you are supposed to be. And if you're watching this video, he at least guided you here. That's not by accident. I don't believe in accidents and I don't believe anything the most I does is for a coincidence. So stay tuned for part three. It's coming up next. Um, have a wonderful Sabbath. I love you guys. Be blessed. Seek the most high. Seek his wisdom. Seek his understanding. Seek his um, guidance. Okay. If you're feeling uncertain, the most high is not the author of confusion. Seek him. Seek him first, please. I love you guys so very much. Seek out this wisdom. Dig deep into it. We got to dig deep and we got to come from this idolatry. Stay part. I'm good. <laughs> Stay tuned for part three. I love you guys so much. Shalom.